Hi, and welcome to another vlog. I'm Ave, I'm an artist, I make pottery, and I draw stuff. So, I've been cleaning. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm in, no, because I haven't started another vlog. So last week and this week, I have been posting on TikTok and on Instagram, like in the stories. So I'll start the day with, what do I want to do? And then I will end the day with, this is what I got done. And honestly, it's been really helpful in getting me back on track. But today, one of the main things was to clean. And so I am in the middle of cleaning. I actually also started reclaiming some clay. So I wanted to show you that really quick. So reclaiming clay is something that is really cool about ceramics. If it doesn't go through the kiln, you can just add water to it and it will rehydrate and you can use this clay again. Um, it's not as simple as that, obviously, but um, it's still nice to know that, oh, this failed thing that I made can have a second chance at being something good. And it does cut costs as long as it doesn't take up too much of your time. So I'm trying two different methods because I haven't reclaimed clay in a long time. And I don't have a plaster slab <laughs> because since I am hand building only, I don't really need to wedge my clay. Like not as much as if I was throwing, then I would absolutely be wedging my clay a lot more. But most of the time I slice a chunk of clay right out the bag and send it through my slab roller after rolling with a rolling pin for a little bit. So there has been no need for a plaster slab. And the other times that I have reclaimed clay, at least, you know, like for my own personal studio use, like not for a bigger um, ceramic studio, cause I was a studio tech before, it involves a plaster slab. So <laughs> I will probably either be pouring a plaster slab this weekend or um, finding an alternative surface or method to get it to the consistency that I would like. So let's take a look at the buckets. Okay, so the bigger bucket is something that I've never tried, but have seen a lot of success stories on it, where you put the clay inside a bag, and then um, you've put that bag in a bucket, and you put water in the bucket. And the water on the outside of the bag um, will push the water on the inside of the bag into the clay, a little bit more evenly. This smaller bucket is more of what I'm used to. I fill it kind of like I'm making rice. I fill it just above um, the level of clay and periodically I'll just go through and mush it. Ooh, it is, oh, that was super quick. I literally put the water in here, I don't know, 10 minutes ago maybe, and it's already, wow. I thought this was gonna take a bit. I haven't had to reclaim clay in about five or six years, so I'm like relearning how to do things. You hear that? Ugh, I hate those types of noises. Ew, but that's okay. <laughs> so what I would do with this, once all the chunks are felt through and sort of processed with my hands, um, I would take this and put it on a plaster slab let that dry out and wedge it periodically. I guess when the clay is dry and super thirsty, um, it will rehydrate very quickly. Okay, so now that my hands are clean, <laughs> or hand, now that my hand is cleaner, um, I want to mop down here, finish cleaning off the last little side table, and then from there I will get to work on some things.
opportunity that's new, there's an inclination to be like, yes, you just you say yes immediately. The clay has been acquired. It's all in the back. Well, you can't really see. Just boxes. And I also picked up some shelves. And the shelves are delicate, so they're staying up here with me so that they don't break. My clay children. And I also picked up a box of red clay that I'm really excited to work with. Um, I think it's just like B-Mix Red or Red Barn, I don't know. It's a Cone 5 clay and it has grog in it, so it'll be nice to work with a clay with grog again. Finally back. It's like four? Yeah, four o'clock on the dot. I left here around 11, so it's a lot of my day. <laughs> but the place I like to go to is called the Rusty Kiln and it's in North Wyndham, Connecticut. So for me, it's about an hour and 20 minutes drive. Um, but the people that run it are really, really nice. Anything that I need to order, they are more than happy to order for me and yeah, it's just nice to shop at a small family-owned business. Um, I don't know of any clay supplier places that aren't quite like that because even Sheffield, as big as it is, I think it's still mostly like a family small business. Very quickly, I'll show you what I got other than the clay. I got eight boxes, which is 400 pounds of clay, which will last me either till the end of the summer slash end of the year. I don't know, it depends on like how hard <laughs> into production do I want to go. But yeah, so I got 400 pounds of Laguna B-Mix 5 No Grog, which is what I love. Um, and then I got one box of Laguna's Red B-Mix, or I don't know, that's what they called it at the store. They called it a Red B-Mix and it does have grog. Um, which honestly I'm a little bit excited for. I am not excited to have red clay all over my studio space because I haven't used red clay here with all my stuff. So not excited about that part. I will have to either get a get more canvas for my slab roller or um just roll them flat a different way. But I'm excited to have a red clay. That's a cone six. Um, I do still have a box of terracotta that I might might use. I haven't, so it might be dry by now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited to have a red clay. And I, I'm just, oh, I'm, mm, I'm just so excited for it. And I was able, they had, I see Albany slip, Albany slip brown, whatever. This glaze I see layered a lot on other glazes, so I was like, I can justify purchasing this because um, I'm trying to use up my glazes before I buy any more. But you know what? Sometimes just gotta do it. Um, but yeah, got this glaze, and the only glaze that I really know that I'm like super out of that I really want is marigold, marigold celadon, which is the yellow celadon. But I do have a bucket that I need to mix. Um, and the other one is Cosmic Tea Dust. <gasps> okay, so Cosmic Tea Dust looks like glitter, and I love it. All the stores that I was looking at online when I was thinking of buying some more glazes online, they were all out. They had one, this was the last one there. So stoked. Also, I got some new shelves. Excited, because I need to like rehab some of my shelves. Not a fun task at all, but also I want to transition my kiln to not have any fulls. I just want halves. So I got two more halves and I probably would have gotten more, but that's, you know what? I'm trying to stay on a budget. And then I got these. These are called stilts and they, that means I can like, let's say I'm doing spoons or something. I can glaze the bottom of it and prop it up. So hopefully these can withstand the weight of some small things that I have in mind. I didn't get very many, I just got, I got six. So that means depending on the type of thing that I'm firing, I can hold, if it's really small, then I can just do the one. But if it's like a longer thing or something, then I might use two or three. I feel like I didn't do anything today, but also I just moved 
450 pounds of clay and drove for like three hours. <laughs> Ugh. And while I'm up that way, there's this really nice dairy slash burger place called Oliver's. If you didn't know, Connecticut is really, really good with ice cream. We have an ice cream trail in this state. Like there's a Yukon Dairy Bar, there's Arethusa. There's just like a lot of really good ice cream. So this place has really good milkshakes slash ice cream. That's what I got. I got that and a burger and fries. Treated myself to a little date to take a break in between, you know, lunch. sharing the good and the bad, right? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, okay, so I was adjusting my tripod. I got this, another elbow one, because it worked so great in my office. I was like, I'll just get another one. Apparently it's not the same one, but I was like, you know what? We're gonna try it. Should've just returned it. Should've just returned it. It was so stiff, and I guess it wasn't entirely the tripod's fault, but let me show you. So, you see this beam? It's not really like integral to the structure of the house. I think it was put there for like woodworking or something. It used to continue on and attach to those pieces. Well, I thought, ooh, I'll clamp something on there. I've done that before. The whole beam fell and shattered some pots. The whole beam. The whole beam fell. Shattered pots. Now, I've been humbled before by pottery. I've had sculptures blow up in the kiln because someone turned it up when they weren't supposed to. I've broken many pieces. I've had an entire kiln load over fire by accident. So, Disappointment, nothing new in ceramics, but doesn't make it hurt any less. <laughs> um, bright side, it was bone dry and not fired yet, so I can reuse that clay eventually. It'll go in the chuck it bucket. Um, I get to look and make sure that my attachments are, you know, solid. Let me show you what I mean. If you're throwing, this knowledge is like way more valuable because then you can see like how even are your walls. Um, did you compress the clay well enough? Are there any air bubbles or, you know, you just check the consistency of your throwing a lot easier this way by like either slicing it in half as soon as you're done throwing or um, if something breaks at any stage, you can like, you know, check your walls and stuff. But I'm slab. I'm slab rolling. This is not a concern or anything. But what I can check is, um, is my method of attaching really good? And the way that it broke tells me that, yeah, I'm doing okay. Um, so you can see right here, this is the bottom of my mug. If I break it, you can see, hopefully, how continuous that is. I think you can see it. There we go. So you can see how continuous the clay is. Which means that, yeah, my methods are fine. It's cool. Um, and I can keep chugging along the way that I'm going. Everything's gravy. It just sucks. <laughs> so it was in total four mugs. I cleaned up two, I left two. I might, I don't know, make a TikTok throwing things into the bucket because people like that destruction. I mean, I like to watch it, so. Yeah. Also, just kind of like made a bummer of my day. But anyways, I'll show you the mug I made after that I'm really excited about. I'm really excited about it. All right, so I am 
really happy with it. I'm excited to glaze the moss, something fun. And I decided to put a mushroom here. I might add another mushroom here or over here. Um, so this will get covered really well, just in case I change my mind. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cute. Hi, so today's goals are to fix up my shelves. I've been firing with this like glaze drip, this glaze thing for a while and it's not the best thing to do, but you know what, it's fine. <laughs> so I have to chisel these things off and then put a fresh coat of kiln wash all over it. And I have new kiln shelves, so I wanna kiln wash those as well. So I fired these higher than it needed to be. Um, I fired it to, oh, I fired it to cone 019 because that was the lowest cone that I have. Um, since it's a manual, I don't have a reader. <laughs> so it's, you know, beyond what needed to cure and my, ah, look at them. They're so beautiful and pristine. The kiln wash that I have cures at 500 degrees. So much lower than <laughs> a code 19 but that's fine they just look so nice and so nice i love it hi okay so today is wednesday the 23rd of june and I don't think I have actually checked in, in a little bit, but you guys saw my kiln shelves. That was the end of last week. And um, I started off this week with under glazing some of the, um, whatchamacallit, the fancier mugs. So the rest are in the kiln, but this one is easy to reach. And I have another one in the works over here. Yeah, and this one says chaotic good, and I cast speak with plants. <laughs> Anyways, glazing those took up pretty much all of yesterday. Um, just, you know, getting the fine detail and carvings and stuff like that. So today, my main goal is to get the kiln as close to full as possible since a bunch of mugs broke <laughs> last week. I am behind where I want to be, but that's okay. Um, I'm hoping this week I can finish filling up the kiln. But before I get back to work, I wanted to show you guys some of the press molds that I got. Um, every now and then I will check either Etsy or eBay or Amazon for molds for fondant. Uh, they tend to work out really well for clay and, um, the, well, it depends on their depth. So like this one, they work out well for clay and there are a lot more options than traditional sprig molds because um, traditional sprig molds are typically made out of plaster. 
Um, but yeah, these are silicone, silicone molds. So if you look for ones that are meant for resin, I find that they are too deep for clay and they assume that you're going to be able to stretch the mold to demold it. So I try to make sure that like, when I'm searching that I'm searching for fondant because fondant is closer to clay and they you know don't assume that you can stretch the mold to pop out the object that you molded because resin you can do that because it's a harder thing <laughs> clay not so much anyways let me show you which ones I got okay I do love that they are also pink <laughs> But um, since I'm prepping for the Ren Fair, I thought some fairies would be cool. This is a fairy house set. This and I think this one came together. And it has leaves and flowers and some mushrooms too. Then here's another little mushroom with a snail. A fairy door. After I took these all out of the package, I kind of forgot which ones came together. But I know that these were all like one big Halloween set. So there's an owl, a tree branch. This one might not work out too well because it's it's too um it curves over too much. Some itty bitty baby tiny Halloween things. <laughs> Again, this one might not work out well either. We'll find out. Um, some bats and these are the three that I most I was most interested in in this set is the skull heads the hand and the bats and a spider um, but this doesn't really look like a spider it just looks like a crab to me and a pumpkin so I got all of these press molds um, to kind of like help out with new ideas, uh, especially for the Ren Fair. I'm really excited to use these. And then I saw this one, kind of new, because I look for dragon scale press molds pretty often because I'm never, <laughs> I'm never satisfied with the ones that are out there. But this one actually looks really cool, except it's a lot smaller than I thought. So I don't even know if I'm really going to be able to use it how I wanted it to, but I am going to experiment with this. Not today though, after this shop update then I will. But what made me think of them, oh there's a YouTube, there you go, Katie Sue Design. Um, what made me think to grab them was the skull one because I am thinking of doing a gelatinous cube mug. 